Good morning, everyone. Uh, we, because we're online, we can talk to face to face, and we can talk to the people who are far away from us. I think God gave us this opportunity to preach this gospel, and as we're preaching this gospel, I'm so thankful that we can uh, take uh, take advantage of this online online uh, network. Although it's, I cannot see them all, but I know that there are around 400,000 people participating in this seminar, so I'm very thankful to be able to talk to you. Are you all happy? Thank you very much. So everyone, everybody is showing their showing me their sign that they're happy. Let's open up our Bible to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 10 to verse 18. If you are there, Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 10, I will read. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering often, oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand for, of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctif sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us for after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and I will, in their minds I will write them, and their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Now where mission of the, there, this is, there is no more offering for sin we read up to here. The, the author of Hebrews, Hebrews, being guided by the Holy Spirit of God, Like Jeremiah 31, from verse 31 to 34, quoting from Jeremiah 31, he's explaining how this word is being uh, accomplished. Although I read the Bible, but this word, we can apply this word, we can get out from sin, and we can have this relationship with God. I never knew that I would be able to have this kind of relationship with God all because before I had not known this word. But as we read the Bible and go to church, the biggest issue that I had in me was the problem of sin. I I talked about this oftentimes. In in 1950, the Korean Civil War broke in Korea. Back then, Korea was just uh, Korea just had got gotten its independence from Japan. So for about five years, so it got its independence in 1945. But after five years later, in 1950s, it's it experienced a Korean civil war in Korea. So the the country became very miserable. I was only seven years old, but we had to evacuate because this. North Korean armies were coming down. But the following year, in 1951, 14th of August, my mother had passed away. I was only seven years old back then, and my mom had passed away. I had Back then, I just knew that he, she passed away, but according to my memories, I saw her going to the restroom, and afterwards she said that she was not feeling well, and she laid she laid down on the floor. Back then, we never imagined going to hospital. About two, three days, she was sick. On the third day. In, in the in, in the morning of the third day, 
I saw my mother passing away. My mom was very sad. Covering my dad's eyes, he saw us. Uh, my father said that I cannot close my eyes with you. So I didn't know what was the meaning of my mother's death back then. But about a month later, my older brother went to army. Because we're in the middle of the war, so anybody who, was t who went, to, went to do the military service, they, they couldn't come back. And in, f in front of our gate of our house, there was this big banner saying Pak Pilchu going to army. So the, uh, the, our villagers, they put this big banner for our, our older brother. After my mother passing away, one month later, my older brother went to army and my father did a lot of, uh, did, uh, do, did a supportive works for the army. He worked in the logistics for the army. And all of a sudden, my mother passed away, my brother was gone, and my father was busy, he was not around. So I was only seven, eight years old and my younger brother was four years old. I had only I had one sis, older sister. We didn't know what to eat and what to how to leave. Because we had a house, we were not beggar, we were not homeless, but our life was so dark. It, from 1951 till 1962, for about 11 years, on the 7th of October 1962, until then I was struggling because of my sin, but for the first time in my life, I was able to, I didn't know back then how it was related to me, but that day I could discover, I could realize that my sins were all forgiven by the blood of Jesus. Since then, what is amazing is, after dinner, I used to, we used to get together from uh, one, of, one of our friend's house because one of our friends uh, had not, didn't have father. So if we go to a house where the father is around, then we, it's not comfortable. So uh, we would go to a, out of our friend's house where, where there's no father. So we would play cards late in the, until late in the night. And when it's late in the night, we'll go, to, go out to the, do the farms of others. And we'll still we dig out potatoes and steal apples. The following day, I would go to church and I'll go to before God and I'll s cry and I'll ask for forgiveness confessing the sins I committed the other day. So I prayed, every day I prayed like this, like confessing my sins for forgiveness. When I come back to my house after committing sin, I would pray to God, God, let me not go to my friend's house. If I go to my friend's house, I'll end up committing sins. So I made up my heart. I made I made this resolution. I made up my heart and I t took this determination. But after some time in the night, I could find myself again in his in his house. And I I struggled. I suffered a lot because of this because of the sin. So I lived like this for many, many days. The year 1962 was one of the most suffering years of my life. But being poor, maybe that I cannot do anything about it. But maybe in five years time, ten years time, if I had any hope that my life can be better then that would be better that would be good but I had no hope like that because even if I go to work in like companies I could not make any money so my life was so miserable 1962 7th of October 1962 was one Sunday early morning I went to the church to ring the bell a big bell of the church and I would go to wake pastor up pastor are you asleep this is time for uh, morning devotion and I I worked I played a role of you know alum to wake pastors up 
After the morning devotion is over, devotion is over, I would I would uh, I'll, I would stay on my knees and I would pray and ask for forgive ask for forgiveness, confessing my sins alone in the chapel. I heard that if the Holy Spirit comes to me, then my all my sins can be forgiven. So I pray to God, God, please let me hear your voice that my sins are forgiven. Just let me hear that voice. So I was always struggling in sin. 1962, 7th of October, 1962. That morning as well, after the morning devotion, when everybody was gone, I was left alone in the chapel. I began to confess my sins and ask for forgiveness. But that day, I didn't know why I did that, but after praying, I stood back up, but all of a sudden, I had this heart that, oh, my sins are forgiven. And having that heart, I began to read the Bible since that, since that day. But what was amazing was that as I was reading through the Bible, I could see different certain passages in the Bible where it was saying that the blood of Jesus was the blood of Jesus washed all my sins away. I felt as if the Bible was telling me that truth. It was amazing. When Jesus was on the earth, once Jesus met this blind man who was born blind, Jesus didn't say anything. Jesus came near the blind man and he took the mud in his hand and he put his he put the mud on the eyes of the blind man. The blind man could have said, Oh, no, why are you doing this to me? No, stop doing this. Who are you? He didn't say that. He was staying silently. When he put the mud on his eyes, then Jesus said, Go to Siloam and wash it off, Jesus said. Because that blind man was 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 beggar, he had to beg from early in the morning to late in the night. He had to beg. One day I went to India. I slept in the hotel and we're heading to the venue for the seminar. In the car, the, so I got on, I was on in this car and uh, it stopped at, a, at the traffic light, but there was this beggar across the road. He was walking with his crutch and he was limping and he, he showed his motions that he's hungry. So give me some money that I so I could buy some food to eat. So he showed me this motion, but I had I had not uh, brought the money with me. So I showed him that I'm sorry I didn't have it. I didn't bring any money. But he but he but he did the motions again, saying, "Oh, I'm so hungry. Please give me some money. Please give me some money so that I could so that I could buy something to eat." But I no I didn't even have a penny with me. So I said, I'm sorry, I have no money. So we, we talked we talked with our emotions, you know, th uh, through the window. And he looked at me like this. And all of a sudden, I saw a miracle. He just, he just put down the crutches and he began to walk on his foot. So he was not actually lame, but in order to beg, maybe he was uh, pretending to be a lame. But because I was not giving him any money, he just stopped uh, pretending and he just put uh, the crutches on his shoulder and began to walk. But it was funny because I thought it was, he was, it was a miracle somehow. So there were people who tried to show this uh, poor image of the person and try to get some money out of the people. But Jesus, uh, what he said to this uh, blind man was, now go to Siloam and wash. Something interesting has happened here. This blind man, he was born blind. So he had to beg all day long. 
to make his living, he had to beg so that he could get some money or food. You know, begging is not an easy job. So he doesn't care. He doesn't know whether he's clean or dirty. He doesn't know whether his hands are dirty or not. He just begged to eat and to leave. But this beggar who was begging, this blind man, he stopped begging and he began to walk toward the Siloam. I don't know if he, had, he knew where Siloam was or not, but I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm a blind man, I'm a blind man, sorry. Where, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it the way to Siloam? So how long do I have to go? Do, do you have like do you have like uh, holes on the road? I can't see. It. Uh, I can't see. I'm a blind man. So please help me. T so teach me the way. So this blind man, when uh, when some kids can uh, show up and say, "Oh, this is the wrong way," they may teach the wrong way, or maybe the good person can come and teach him the right way. But he had no power to actually tell which is right and which is wrong. But as this man, this man was begging, he stopped begging, and he began to walk uh, toward walk for Siloam. What is it? In the heart of the beg, in the heart of the blind man, the word of Jesus came in in his heart. Until then, he had no heart of Jesus in him. So his thought was leading his life. Oh, after after having breakfast, he would think, "Oh, uh, how can what what should I do? Where should I beg to get more money? How should I express my hunger?" So it was his thought that led him. But Jesus put mud on his eyes. And Jesus said, now go to Siloam and wash it off. Now, it, wasn't, it was not anyone else leading, his, leading him his life. But it was the word of Jesus leading this blind man. Everyone. When you wake, when you open your eyes in the morning, what is the first thing that you do? You know, you, you wear a dress and you have breakfast, you wash your face. Maybe you do certain routines of your life in the morning. But what leads your life? Your, your personality your ego, your experiences, and your fleshly desires, it make, let you make money and work to get money and buy a house, buy a refrigerator, buy cars. So it is the thought, it is your experience, it's your ego that makes you do, makes you do certain things of your life. But, but the man who, was in, who had an infirmity for 38 years, it was clear that it was clear that he could not walk. He knew that he could not walk. But the word of Jesus came to him saying, "Now stand up and take your bed and walk." Rise, take your bed and walk, Jesus said. This man would have informed you for 38 years. Actually, he cannot walk, but you know, I've been I've been I've been in this state for 38 years. I cannot walk. This is how I am. I cannot. He had this thought. He had this thought saying, I cannot walk. But Jesus, he had, Jesus told him to rise and take up, take his bed and walk. So in the heart of this man who had an infirmity for 38 years, he had this thought saying, no, I cannot walk. There was the other thought saying, no, I can walk because Jesus said I should walk. So these two thoughts fought against one another. If uh, the thought 
I cannot walk one in his heart, he would be he would have thought, oh, but that's a, that's crazy what he's saying. I cannot walk. What is he talking about? That's that's how he would have reacted. But what's clear is uh, the man who had, an, who, had, who had an infirmity for 38 years, he had he had been in that state for uh, 38 years, but he had, he had uh, for a long time, he couldn't walk. But when he heard the word of Jesus saying he should rise and take his bed and walk, this word came into this man's heart. Uh, when this thought, when this heart came into his heart, Oh, I cannot walk. So this thought, the, take your rice, take your bed and walk, one, his thought. There are many, many thoughts in us, and the strongest thought in our hearts draws our lives and leads our lives. And when he actually rose up, it worked and he could walk. The blind man... He was living after his fleshly desire and his want. Because he was physically hungry, he had to eat. So in order to satisfy his flesh, he had to make money to eat. So he had to, you know, because he had no other techniques or skills, the only thing that he could do was begging. That's why he begged. When you see Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, it says there that, And you had quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. It says, We're in, in time past, that's when we did not know our Lord Jesus. Ye worked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Verse 3, it says, Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and are by nature the children of wrath, even as, even as others. Satan worked. So as we lived according to our lust and flesh, we told a lie, we committed adultery, so we became the children of wrath. But when we come to verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love, wherewith He loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. So here, God saved us, and we got out of we got out of it. This blind man, he he lived after his fleshly desire. Today I need certain food. Today I need to wear certain things. So he was begging on the street. So until then, he was living after his flesh, his lust, his fleshly desires. But that day. He met Jesus. Jesus put the mud on his eyes and told him to go and wash it off at Siloam. So in the heart of this man, he wanted to actually beg for money, beg for food, and he wanted to maybe save up, save up some money when he gets some more money than he expected. But this blind man... He met Jesus by chance. Jesus put mud on his eyes. He said, Go to Siloam and wash. So his thoughts were telling him to go and beg to make my living today. Before, it was his thought that led his life. But a new thought arose this time in his heart. What was it? It was the word of Jesus. Oh no, I have to beg today. Oh, I have to make money. Oh, if not, I have to, you know, starve. 
But this word uh, came in his heart. Now go to the pool of Siloam. Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So this word of Jesus defeated the thought that I have to beg. So now who is walking? Now it is the word of Jesus saying, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. This word is letting this man walk towards Siloam. So now he is uh, trying to find his way out to Siloam. Oh, is, it, is this the way to Siloam? How far is it from here? Is there any, po- any holes on, uh, on the way? So he was acting his way out to go to the pool of Siloam. But not even once until then, He was led by the the prince of the power of the air. He had never been led by the voice of Jesus until then. But that day, as he met Jesus, Jesus told him to go and go to the pool of Siloam and wash. When he heard the word of Jesus, although he was same blind man like as yesterday. Well, he was a beggar, like just like yesterday, just as yesterday, like yesterday, he was still poor, he was still hungry. But the difference today was that yesterday, he was living for his fleshly desire, lust, pleasure. It was that, it was those that led his life. But this time that he met Jesus, it was the word of Jesus that which was leading him. The word of Jesus was leading this man. This blind man, he was being led by his own thoughts. But now he came to be led by the word of Jesus. It was amazing. Amazing thing happened. He was trying to find his way. Oh, is this Silam? Yes. Uh, is there any steep here? You know, blind man when he falls, when he drowns in the water, he doesn't know where he doesn't know where to go because even if he can swim, he doesn't know where uh, where to where to eat because he cannot find a way out. So he would be very you know afraid. But he went when he went to the pool of Siloam. He be, he, he scooped water with his hands and began to wash his face. What let him What let him do that? It was the word of Jesus that let him do that. The word of Jesus arose a new heart in him to want, wanting to go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So following this heart, he went and he washed. So from that moment on, it was the word of Jesus that, uh, w- that led his life. Although he was the same blind man. But before then, he was led by his thought. But now he was being led by the word of Jesus. He was so different. That's how I was. From my childhood, my mom went to church. So when my mom married my my dad, she was living under my my grandparents, and she she, she couldn't go to church. And sometime in the night. Some she, in the night she would sing some hymns for me. Uh, Jesus Christ, when you come back to this world. So, from my childhood, I went to church because of, because of her. And I heard many sermons. But I, the word of Jesus never, did not come into my heart. Although it was the word of Jesus that can defeat my thought and lead me because I was hungry. If I want to eat certain things, I would just go to others' farm and steal apples and steal persimmons. I was just filled up with that thought. But in 1962, 
I took the examination. I, I applied for the uh, vocational soldier test, but I, I took the test. But in the body in the body checkup, I because my front teeth was broken, I failed the test. When I failed that examination, I was totally in despair. Oh, my life doesn't work. It works out for everyone else, but it doesn't work out for me. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So that's when I thought a lot. From the month of from the month of May to the month of October, 1962, I thought a lot about my life. Those who are living well, why are they living wealthy life? But why nothing's working out in my life? For other people, there are people who are not as good as me, but they, when they try something out, they, they, that works. But why nothing works out for me? I realize that when I try anything with my thought, I, all, I always failed. So I shouldn't believe in my thought, I, 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 I thought to myself. After the Atlantic War, my uncle was now living in Yukicho in uh, Japan. And my uncle, my, my uncle worked in civil engineering and he constructed paved road, he, he, he built buildings. So after the war, because he lost his family, when he went to Japan, he, he, he got married again in Japan. So my cousins are very young. So he wanted to bring, he wanted to call me and let work in Jap work in Japan. So in order to go there, I I learned Japanese a lot. Although I now I forgot a lot of, a lot of Japanese, but I couldn't make it to go there. So nothing worked out for me. Seventh of October, nineteen sixty-two. After confessing my sins, when I opened my eyes, this little thought arose in me that all my sins were forgiven, and I began to read the Bible one by one. Before then, I also read the Bible. But I couldn't really accept those words I thought I was reading. But what was amazing was I began to think that all, all my sins are forgiven by the blood of Jesus, and this word came into my heart. To this blind man, Jesus said, uh, Jesus said uh, to the man, the blind man, with his own voice to washed himself at the Sipul of Siloam and he said to Jesus also said to the man who had an infirmity for 38 years to rise and take his bed and walk but me I was very fast and I was very smart when, when it comes to committing sin if it was not saved at an early age maybe I could have committed I, maybe I could have ended up in maybe in the prison when it comes to committing sin I was very smart although I was I was dumb in any other thing yeah, in anyone's eyes, I was a sinner, I was a bad guy, I was evil, I was, you know, a very deceitful person, cunning. But the Bible was telling me that my sins were all forgiven. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Through the redemption, being justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. This was the Word of God. Yeah, I was a sinner. You know, whenever I opened my mouth, it was lie. I, you know, told lies uncountable times. I was such a filthy sinner. But among the six, six books of the Bible, 
there was this word where he said that my sins were all forgiven. The blind man will say, today I have to beg and I have to make some money. But this word, when he heard the word of Jesus saying, I have to go and wash at the river Siloam, full of Sil pool of Siloam, the man who had an infirmity for 38 years, he was lying at the pool of Bethesda, believing that he can never walk. He heard the word of Jesus saying, uh, rise, take thy bed and walk. The blood of Jesus This word uh, of Jesus saying, my sins are all forgiven by the blood of Jesus, this word came into my heart. Ah, my sins are forgiven. Through the blood of Jesus, Jesus told me this. From that day on, I, would, I, wanted, I wanted to go to see my friends. and But one day, I could find myself that I was not going there anymore. I just found myself reading the Bible one night. One day, I, I had an appointment with my friends, but I had little time left. So I said, maybe I could, read, I could read Bible before going there. But reading the Bible, I forgot about the promise, and the sun was already setting. So each, pass, each verses in the Bible was coming into my heart. And this precious word of Jesus was going through my ear. This word that my sins are all forgiven by the blood of Jesus, I could, I could come to believe in this word. What is amazing is from that point on, my life began to change. I, I could read the Bible. Now back then, I was doing working in Sunday school. I was also a member of the young men's group in the church. And every Sun, every Saturday, we practiced the praises that we're going to sing on on Sunday, the following day. I mean, and usually when you when we when we prepare the hymns that we're going to sing on Sunday, we would maybe prepare one song after the prayer of blessing of the pastor we were seeing certain line like uh, from the beginning to the to today let us let's praise our lord all that we have let us all give them all unto christ we'll sing that song so there are two three three we were singing three four songs so we would practice that and then we'll and then we'll sing you know like worldly songs like there were songs like oh, oh a person was wearing you know yellow shirt we'll sing that all together and we're excited and we ended that's how we ended the meet, meet, uh, practice for the praises so once the meeting was over I st stood up and I stood in front of everybody and said hey I received the forgiveness of sin I told them and I, but I couldn't explain in detail how I came to receive forgiveness of sin. But I told people who were there that I, you have to, you have to also also receive forgiveness of sin. There were about twenty members of the choir there, and they were very surprised. And they were like, "Oh, Mr. Park, how did you receive how did you receive forgiveness of sin? Let me know. Teach me too." But I couldn't explain in detail how I could receive forgiveness of sin. I just told them that we have to receive forgiveness of sin. And I began to read the Bible. The Bible was so good. In order to read the Bible, until getting married, until my marriage, it never took me more than two minutes to finish my meal. In order to, you know, in order to save time, it never took me more than five minutes to do sh the shower. And I slept many times hugging the Bible in my in my bosom. 
So unless I was washing my face, I would I had always I was always carrying the Bible in my hands. When I was you know when I was walking in the street, I would be memorizing you know Bible verses in my head. This blind man, the one word of Jesus came unto this blind man, and it changed the life of this blind man. I'm a person who is nothing. But what led me back then? It was the the power of the prince of the air. Satan was leading me, but my but lust and desires and flesh were leading me. That was what was leading me back then. But. Before meeting uh, the blind, before meeting Jesus, this blind man he was led by Satan. Was also led by his fleshly desire. He his shelter, clothing, food, and all that was in, that that he was interested in was about food, eating, wearing. Whenever I go to church too, I would just think, "Oh, he's good at preaching. Oh, he's not good at preaching." I would just, you know, evaluate the preachers. But after realizing the fact that my sins were forgiven by the blood of Jesus, but the hearts which were not present in me began to lead my life. It was my father who recognized this change. My father could see that I was changing. So when I told him that I was going, to, I want to go to mission school. My father he supported me a lot. Although he was, he was his life was not easy, but he was sent us one sack of rice. For the first three months, he sent us first one sack of rice, but the brothers around me they told me not to. The brothers around me told me to tell him not to send us the sack of rice. Among their brothers who were receiving training, none, none, of, uh, none of their parents came to see them. But my father asked his way to come to our mission school and visited our school. Oh, where do you eat? Oh, this is where we eat, father. Where do you study? Oh, this is where we study. Where do you sleep? So he show, I showed him every, everything. Then he said, "Who is the leading missionary in this place? Is missionary Dick? Or oh, can I see him? I've got something to tell him." So missionary Dick and uh, my father they sat together. So they talked. There was a translator. They began to. They had a conversation. And my dad said, "Oh, missionary." Uh, you must be hard. You must be very. It must be not easy to, you know, teach my son Oksu. My son Oksu, when you teach, when you let him do, when you t teach, tell him to do a certain thing, he just he would just taste it and he will he will stop doing it. I've let him try many things, but after tasting certain thing, he will stop. But believing in Jesus. He has already. He already had knows the taste of it, and he, he have he has experienced it quite some time. But he's still doing it, so I'm pretty sure maybe this kind of goes well with his character, with his characteristics. So, missionary, so please help my son Oksu, since it goes well with his characters. Maybe maybe you, maybe this goes well with his interest and hobby. So please maybe you could guide him well, so he could be a good worker of the gospel. So it's been uh, and even now when I remember my father, I tell him in my mind, uh, "Dad, I'm still doing this ministry. I didn't stop." Spiritual life. It's not about me doing hard, living well, doing good stuff, and doing services for the church. It's not about that. 
spiritual life there is my heart that I have but there is heart that Jesus has When the word of Jesus came upon our heart, comes upon our heart, each word of Jesus, each word of Jesus comes from the heart of Jesus. Jesus cannot tell a lie, which means something that is not in his heart. So, what Jesus says, no matter what He says, in, in His Word, you will be able to see His heart. So, no matter what He tells you, if we accept His Word in our heart, from that day on, we will be able to live a new life being guided by this heart. For a long time I went to church. The pastors of our church, pastors of our church back then, elders of our church, all of them, they said that they were sinners. So this blind man, every morning when he wakes up, he went out to beg. So until then did he beg? Until he met Jesus. Jesus He said, Go to Siloam, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. It was a short word. It was not a long word. It was not a long sermon. It was not something there's nothing to write about there. He just said, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. But there's one thing that he, this blind man, he had to decide. Oh, I have to go to beg now. I don't know where this pool of Siloam is. Maybe I should just, you know, go. Maybe I should, I should just keep begging. If he just, you know, despise and just ignore the word of Jesus, he would live like that again forever. But this word that he has, but the word of Jesus was fighting in his heart. His heart was telling, telling him, no, I should stop. His heart was telling him, maybe I should just go and go to Siloam and listen to the word of Jesus. But his thought, the thought that was in him said, maybe, I know I, should, I have to go to beg. But the word of Jesus was telling him to go and wash himself at Siloam. If this blind man following his own thought, if his thought defeated the word of Jesus in his heart, he would have then followed his own thought. But this blind man, he was led by the word of Jesus. When you read the Bible, there are precious works of the Bible. In, there are precious works of God in the Bible. Because when I was when I was young, the the pastors of our church, the elders of our church, the members of our church, they all told me that they were sinners. So then I thought I was also a sinner. And also, it is true that I sinned a lot. So I, I thought to myself, I will surely end up in hell. But when I read the Bible, the Bible was saying, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, it's true, I'm a sinner. I sinned. I could not go into the, go into the glory of God. I'm a sinner. That's what I thought until 19 years old. When I turned 19, on the, 7th of, on the 7th of October 1962, I had the heart that my sins were all forgiven. But when I read the Bible, you know, everybody sinned and everybody was a liar. But through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, by the grace of God, 
we are justified. My thought, which was telling me that I'm a sinner, and the word of God, which was telling me that I was justified. So there was this fight between these two thoughts, two words. Amen? Amen. It's true I, I stole. It's true I did bad things. One day I stole one of our one of my friend's pen and I got caught. You know, I was good at telling lies. I was good at, you know, stealing. But in the beginning I didn't mean to tell a lie because I was such a pathetic person. I was such a pathetic person. So I wanted to, you know, show off and add some lies to myself to show that I'm a I'm at least something I'm at least someone who is, you know, good. So in order to show myself as if I'm a good person, I was, I was, I added certain lies in my life. But after one year, I became such a big liar. Whenever I opened my mouth, lies began to you know, flow out of my mouth. Whenever I opened my mouth, my friends would be like, "Oh, also he started lying again. You shouldn't, you, sh you shouldn't believe what he's saying." So all my friends they knew that I was lying, because I told so many lies. So I was obviously a sinner. I'm a sinner. So I was I was living in this deep sin. The blind man when he met Jesus. Jesus said, Go to Silwam, go to the pool of Silwam and wash. And Jesus put mud on his eyes. Oh I can't. I have to go to bag. That's what he thought. But that day, amazingly, the word of Jesus saying, go to the pool of Sulaim and watch, this word defeated his thought saying, I have to go to bag. You know, many times you also you defeat the word of God. You abandon the word of God in you and you live the way you want to live, right? No way. You have to you have to let Jesus uh, take over in your heart. Then the word of Jesus will be the leader will be will be the owner of your heart. Then your life will be so much blessed. It will be so much blessed. Hallelujah. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. By the grace of God we are justified. This word in the Bible. No, I'm a sinner. So these two hearts fought against one another. No, I'm a sinner. I'm. Th this is what I'm. I told so many lies. I must be sinner. And I I stole. I deceived others. You know, I behaved. behaved I behaved as a bad person. I'm a. I'm a sinner. This is clear. But that was my thought. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So that's what the Bible said. So we are justified. Yeah, I am justified. Hallelujah. This word came upon my heart. So this word came into my heart and defeated all the thought that was telling me that I was a sinner. You know, I committed so many sins, I must be a sinner. But when this word came into my heart, I became righteous. This word took over my heart, everyone. This word of Jesus took over my heart. So in your heart, which one wins? The word or your thoughts? Let the word win. Take the side of the word. You have to go to the side of the word. Amen. From then on, my life changed. Since Jesus came into my heart, 
I changed and I turned into a new person. So this word of Jesus came into my heart. This word of Jesus saying I'm righteous. This word of God saying I'm, my sins are washed. This word of God saying He will not remember my sins anymore. This word of God saying I was justified and sanctified. So this word came into my heart and pa -pa 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 defeated and cast out all the thought that told me that I was a sinner. Hallelujah. When Jesus went to the temple of Jerusalem, he cast Jesus drove out all the people who were exchanging money, selling, you know, lambs and goats and doves. All this thought telling me that I was a sinner, this evil thought, this dirty thought, Jesus drove the, drove them out all. And then I'm such a filthy sinner. But Jesus Until then, he lived after his own desire, his lust. But now, being led by the word of Jesus, he was hitting somewhere. Where, where was he hitting to? He was taking these blessed steps. He went there. And according to the word, he washed himself at the river, at the pool of Siloam. This new world that he had never imagined began to rise from this blind man's heart. Oh, I can see now. Oh, this is what he means by seeing. This is such, such an amazing thing. Every day. That's how I was. I was a useless, good-for-nothing and pathetic person. Now, through this summer camp, as we talked about Jeremiah 31, verse 31, and verse 30 to the 44, we are talking about the words concerning this. Jesus, when he stood in front of the woman who, had, who was caught in the act of all tree, Scribes and Pharisees said, According to the law of Moses, this such should be stoned. But what say you? Jesus then he wrote something on the ground. He wrote it twice. After writing twice on the ground, Jesus stood up. Then Jesus said, Among you has no sin, cast the first stone at her. And then Jesus stooped, stooped down and he wrote the second time. So there are so Jesus, God he wrote twice. The first time God wrote things was when God wrote on the tablet of stone. After writing it once, because the Israelite they they made golden calf, he brought another tablet of stone, so God wrote it wrote it twice on the tablet of stone. So now God Jesus who is God, he began he wrote on the ground with his finger. Hebrews chapter 10, from verse 10 to 11 that we read today. What does it say there? This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. So with his own finger, Jesus wrote the law of Moses, the Ten Commandments to Moses, you shall not make any other God, you shall not, you should not speak, you should not make any blasphemy against God, you should not keep the Sabbath, you shall, you shall honor, you shall honor your parents, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not bear false witness. So, uh, the woman was caught in the, in the, in the act of adultery, according to the New Covenant, in Jeremiah 31, verse 
34, it says, I'll forgive their iniquity. I'll remember their sin no more, said the Lord. So the first covenant, so the first covenant, in the first covenant, it depended on our actions, our behavior, but the second covenant, it depended not on us, but it depended on God, what God had done. You know, when there is a sports day in, uh, in, the, in, in the school, you know, all the parents would participate. And there's a, this running where the, the father and the son pair up and they run together, holding, t- tying their, one, one of their foot together. Sometimes, you know, there's a, there are fathers who cannot, who, there are fathers whose son cannot run well. Then those fathers, they will carry, you know, those fathers, they will carry their son and they'll run fast. So when they win the race, it's not because the son ran well that they would win the race, but because the father ran well that they would win the race. So when they get the prize, it's because the father ran well. So that's why they won the race. The son didn't do anything. So it's just like that. So now, it's not us who did it, but what Jesus has done, it becomes ours. So before then, we lived after our fleshly desire. But this word of Jesus, this law of Jesus, He put this law in our heart. He, put, he, wrote, he wrote this law in our minds. So this, this blind man, until then, he lived after his own fleshly desires, his lust, his want. But that day, the word of Jesus came into his heart and led his heart. And the word of Jesus was leading this blind man's life. So when you see what he says there, this blind man was had his eyes open, he was walking. And people said, this is Sabbath day, why are, why are you walking? Then he said, the one who healed me told me to walk, that's why I'm walking. Who is it? I don't know who that is. Why are you walking? You know, he was a blind man, so he, but he was very he was very wise. This was amazing because now Jesus was working alive in his heart. So when you accept this Jesus, although in my eyes is Jesus, uh, in my eyes is sinner. The word of God says, I'll, I'll forgive their iniquity, I'll remember their sin no more. This word came and fights now the thought that I'm a sinner. So we, we, we said that we are sinners who are alive, thinking that because we could not defeat our thoughts. But when this word of Jesus came into our heart, that He washed our sins away, it just gave a good punch to our thought that we are sinner. And... And then this word was settled, this word settled down in our heart that I'm now I'm righteous. And he's not ready to defeat any other thought. If a thought arises in our heart that I, I'm still sinner, this word of God will defeat any other thought. You know, if God said that, then he's right. That's how I became sinner. You know, I committed many sins, but because God said I'm righteous, this word has to take over. This word has to defeat any other thought. Many people today, many churches today, many members of the churches today, they go to church for 10 years, 20, 30, 40 years. Because they can't believe that the cro- blood of the cross washed their sins away. That's why even pastors, they still call themselves sinners. Even deacons, even elders, they still call themselves sinners. There are people who call Pastor Oksu Park cult, but what is funny is though, I, if they not if they don't believe the blood of Jesus and see that they are sinners, they become you know good. And if I say that I, my sins are blo- shed, my sins are washed by blood by the blood of Jesus, that's when they would call me cult. When the blood of Jesus came into my heart, my eyes began to open. The blind man, he didn't know anything. He, was, he had his eyes closed. He couldn't see anything. But 
When his eyes opened, he could now see everything. Yes, my sins are all forgiven. From then on in my heart, the word of Jesus came in. And we're living such a blessed life. Last May, we uh, gave, we broadcasted 11 sermons of 90 minutes. 276 broadcasting stations around the world, they broadcasted these sermons. Back then, there were many people who were suffering because of the COVID-19. There were no sports games, there was no meetings, everything was closed. So through Zoom, they heard uh, the sermon online. Many people, they uploaded their comment, and it was really amazing. There was a sister named Yi Chanmi in our church. She, her name is Chanmi because she's devout and she's beautiful. Her parents her parents immigrated to South America. That's where she grew. So she was, she's really good at, you know, Spanish. On the Easter day, we broadcasted our, our worship in five different languages. I Korean, Chinese, English, French, and Spanish. This sister, she was translating in Spanish. And when the sermon was over, all these comments were uploaded. So that day after hearing the sermon, there were 5,000 people who got saved and who left the comment. You know, Spanish-speaking people, they are far away from Korea. But in even in English-speaking uh, countries, there are many people they heard the sermon. I couldn't believe it. And later we counted the number of the people who heard the sermon. It was about 2 million. And there was com some traffic, online traffic, because so many people, they joined uh, the meeting. I was so thankful to God. God, I'm so thankful. I'm preaching this gospel, and I can see how, how much you're helping me, Lord. And since then... In the month of May, we organized online Grand Bible Seminar. The Grand Bible Seminar that we organize every year. So during online Bible Seminar, I gave 11 sermons of 90 minutes. And there are broadcasting stations where they broadcasted the sermons. Uh, when they first broadcasted it, uh, they didn't know, but afterwards, the reactions of the audience were so good that 276 broadcasting stations, they broadcasted, they televised our sermons. When we first began, they were, they expected maybe 100 and 130 million people came in to watch. But number of the people increased, increased, and the total of the broadcasting station that televised our sermon went up to 276. And many people, they received forgiveness of sin. Because of COVID-19, there are people who are dying, there are people who are suffering. But I thought about it. On the earth, there are many natural disasters. But each time, God humbles our heart in order to bless us in our hearts. So I said to the said to our members of the church that God always give us blessings after this uh, difficulties. If you accept it by faith, this would be blessing in your life. And many people received forgiveness of sin. And actually, CTN television is not any tele. It's not a television where anybody can give sermon. But now it's been more than a month now since we began to send out and televise our sermons on CTN. 
I was thankful to God. I'm such a pathetic person. I was smart in committing sin more than anyone else. I was a person who was supposed to be in prison. But in 1962, at the age of 19, the one word of Jesus came into my heart. The word that we read today, Hebrews chapter 10, it says that this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. This word of Jesus came into our hearts. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This was the only word that I knew and I didn't read the following. I didn't read the verse 24 that followed by verse 23. Through the redemption that is in Christ. Being justified freely through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus by His grace. So this is the word of God. Being justified freely Oh, I'm justified. I'm justified. I'm justified. I'm justified. I'm justified. I had so many sins I was ashamed before God. But who? God. Even if, even if other people call me called, it doesn't matter if God is with me. What is, what's the matter? It doesn't matter at all. Now the whole world is giving their attention to this word. Even now, about 400,000 people, they're listening to this word. I'm so thankful to God. We were living in sin. But it, on the 7th of October, 1962, this heart arose in my heart that my sins were all forgiven. And when I opened the Bible, when I checked it in the Bible, I could see that my sins were all forgiven. Since that day, this word was leading me. I was so thankful to God. In everything that I did, I could see how God was blessing, how, how God was bless, blessing it. Who is it. Who am I? I'm such a pathetic person. I have to end up in hell. I have to be cursed. But God, why did you let me preach the gospel? A person like me. Uh, well, God gave us healthy body. He gave, he gave me precious brothers and sisters. He let me start this mission, ministry. He let me preach this gospel all around the world. Especially Christian leaders from all around the world. When they, when they hear our sermons, they want to work with us. Once we went to Tanzania, When they heard that I, I came, about 500, 500 Christian leaders, they came. So they had to rent a place. And later, about 2,000 people came. So they couldn't come into the place where we were having the program. And I preached the word there. And at one point, some people, they rose up in the middle of the sermon. In the middle of the sermon, some people, they rose up. They stood up and I, I, I thought to myself, why are they, why did they st stand up? And they began to dance. And they were, they were crying. I could feel this hit in my heart. So many pastors, they were suffering in sin. That when they hear this word, 
through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, through the by His grace, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God in the Bible. If God says we are righteous, then we are righteous. If God says we are righteous, then we are righteous. Then the love of God will fill up our heart. And when you also believe in this word, your heart will be filled up with the love of Christ, grace of God. Since that day, I'll put my laws in their hearts. I'll write, I'll, I'll write it in their minds. Now that this is forgiven, there is no sacrifice for sin. That is why we don't give any sacrifice anymore. We don't give any offering. We don't give any sacrifice. Loving folks, I'm so thankful to be able to share this precious word in front of you today. The, this blind man, when he accepted the word of Jesus, not the word of Pastor Oxford Park, but please accept this word of God. When this word stays, remains in your heart, although before it was a lust and flesh desire that led my life, but I'll put my laws and I'll write them in their minds. So this word, let this word lead and guide our lives so that we can get closer to the Lord and closer to the Lord. I believe that this will surely happen. Let us pray. Holy Father God, even if I men even if I say ten times, thousand times, ten thousand times, it's not enough. Holy Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. And your blood that was shed on the cross, it was not simply shed, but it washed our sins eternally. And it made us righteous. So, we who are sinners once, we are now made righteous and holy. Now, let us not be led by our thought or Satan's thought, but let this word dwell in us. Let your heart dwell in us so that it, your heart guide us through the path that you want to lead us through. All those of us who have heard this word today, let us be one-hearted, especially let us be one-hearted with you, Lord, so that we could be guided, so that we could live for you, Lord, for the rest of our lives. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we prayed. Amen. Thank you very much.